Hey guys, here's my 2022 Black Diamond Bronco. I've been enjoying it thus far, but one of the aspects that I have been enjoying not as much is the hardtop. And to be more specific, the hardtop noises that it makes. Uh, so this is not the same thing as the rattling uh, with that pin in the front. Uh, what I'm talking about is the actual hardtop itself, because these panels are so big and because they're not secured to the roll cage, they actually kind of tend to uh, reverberate themselves. So this isn't outside noise coming into the cabin, it's the actual roof itself kind of shaking and making this wub 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 sound. And to give you my best idea or impression of what that would sound like is, if you know that you're going to be hearing a loud noise, sometimes you'll brace your eardrums and you'll kind of get that shaky wubby noise in your eardrums. That's kind of what it sounds like when this car drives over, in particular, railroad tracks or any other large bump. So what I decided to do to try to tackle this is uh, put Dyna mat and Dyna liner inside the cabin. So this already came with the factory uh, head top headliner in it, which as you know, doesn't really do much. It's just this paper thin uh, piece of carpet. So what I did is I peeled it away and I put down Dyna mat and Dyna liner and then reinstalled the headliner over it to give it or maintain that factory look. Uh, and I'll give you my impressions in a little bit. Now I fully understand that 99% of Bronco owners don't care about sound ending or reverberation. That's not why you buy a Bronco. But if you have extra time or money on your hands, this might be a worthwhile upgrade. If you're new to sound deadening, there are basically three materials that you want to be using. The vibration dampening or the CLD layer. You want to be using a decoupling layer or a closed cell foam layer. And the last layer that you want to be using is a mass loaded vinyl. That's the actual layer that will block the sound. The reason I'm not using that third layer is because um, it's heavy and I don't think it will adhere or stay up very well on the roof tiles. And with those being removable on the Bronco, um, I don't want to add too much weight to them. So the modification that you see here today won't be actually blocking a lot of sound. It will just be dampening a lot of the vibrations that occur on those panels. Now from the research that I did, Dynamat Extreme is kind of like the standard in um, vibration dampening. And the best, I believe, is uh, Resonix. Um, and then below Dynamat would be like uh, a more budget-friendly option like Noiko, Nyko, or uh, Soundskins. I just decided to go with Dynamat because I didn't know and I don't have any experience. But I guess I'd probably recommend the, the top of the line, which is Resonix. I'm using quarter-inch thick Dyna liner. There's some question as to whether this stuff is actually doing anything because if its sole purpose is to act as a decoupling layer and not necessarily sound absorption or sound insulation, uh, then why bother putting it on the headliner? I'm doing it honestly because someone else on the Bronco 6G forum did. They did eighth inch and recommended going up to quarter. I think it may have some benefits as far as heat and cool, keep the heat in or keep the cool out or whatever you want to do. but I. I figured just for a quarter inch, it couldn't hurt. Now for the middle section, I'll show you how I peel up the headliner. I usually start just with my hands and peel up a corner. It's fairly easy to get a start. Once I get enough of a purchase, I use some flat pliers, grip it, and then start pulling. Utilizing this method does deform that headliner a little bit. So you'll notice when you go to reinstall, some of the edges might be a little wavy where you pulled. Perhaps you can tell me down in the comment section below what the better method is, maybe a heat gun, so people in the future don't have to work as hard. A one-handed view of what it looks like when I'm blowing it up. I'll try. That 
that's the best I can do with one hand. I don't think I'm gonna bother cleaning with Goo Gone or any other alcohol cleaner, um, just because this is still pretty tacky. I don't wanna put in the effort, and if it's under the Dynamat anyways, I think it might just be more or less more adhesion. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with the Dynamat falling down. I pulled off the liner from the first piece. I've laid down two pieces of Dynamat and traced the outline in blue and red Sharpie. I'm cutting on top of cardboard and I'm using a just a regular razor blade. I found this works better than a pair of scissors. The scissors kind of get gunked up in this butyl rubber material. It's what I recommend you do too. Here's the first look with the Dynamat installed. If you're like me and you just go and buy everything on Amazon, this was the highest rated roller. It's still not that great because the edges of the wheel are higher than the center of the wheel. So as you're rolling it out, you get these vertical lines on the Dynamat. I would have preferred a smoother roller for a smoother application, but to be honest, there aren't too many rollers on Amazon that got better reviews than this one. Here's the Dyna liner with the OEM head top liner on top of it. I'm gonna trace it out with Sharpie and cut it slightly smaller than the OEM. So when I go to reinstall this, I can maintain some of the OEM looking qualities without the Dyna liner peeking out beneath it. It won't be perfect, but that's the strategy. Almost done installing the Dyna liner. The only tips or advice I have here is um, start in the center and work your way out because this Dyna liner is just foam, so it's less forgiving and less stretchy than the Dynamat Extreme. So in some of these recessed areas here, um, you might notice, like right there, basically areas where the Dyna liner hasn't adhered yet. So if you start there and push down and then work your way out, you'll buy yourself a few more millimeters of tolerance. I'm using Gorilla Spray Adhesive. I just saw this when I got home. Not recommended for use on automotive headliners. So I suggest you get something different. I'm gonna use it anyway. I'm lazy. Headliner is off. I think I'll use three sheets of Dynamat. Maybe use some scraps around the edges. The thing with butyl rubber is you don't need 100% coverage because it's just acting as a vibration dampener. So those curved edges around the sides are probably not going to need Dynamat because those curved areas are already reinforced and will have less vibrations than those smooth, flat areas there. Three sheets fits almost perfectly. I will add a tiny sheet here and here just because those sections are actually uh, relatively flat. When applying the Dynamat Extreme, the YouTube videos tell you to partially peel back the backing, so only part of it is exposed at a time. And I kind of thought they were crazy that I could just be careful about it and not do that. But man, this stuff is really, really sticky. Um, so I would just follow their suggestion. And what I've been doing is um, you can almost kind of see where the old liner was. 
So the non-sticky portion, I'm kind of lining up over here. And then I have this peeled over here around the sensitive areas. And then I'll work this way. A helpful hint for getting in the creases, like there's a hump right here, is to use the back of the roller. Just helps and is a little bit quicker and more efficient than using the roller itself. I'm actually very pleased that one box of Dyna Liner quarter inch perfectly fits the headliner with a little bit of overhang on the left and right. Here's the finished product. Looks pretty stock. Let's zoom in on the edges. Dynamat peeking through. Again, I tried to cut the Dynamat and the Dyna liner about a centimeter shorter. Just so you can cover it up with the factory. Let's see if it... Yeah, good. Let's take a look at these guys. Dynamat peeking through there. Pretty good. Had my dad help me get the roof off. The only thing that I forgot is the um, C pillar bolts. So you have the, the six or eight regular ones, but then there are the C pillar bolts that are right here. Because the rear cab is so large, I'm opting to hand put in the dyna liner rather than tracing the outline with the previous headliner. Just got the dynamat installed on the rear cab. When you're freehanding it like I am, you can push down the dynamat with the backing still attached and you can press down and you'll get some impressions around these cutout areas. And then with those impressions, you can mark it with a Sharpie. And then you can pull the whole thing off with the paper backing still on, cut out those lines, those Sharpie lines, and then you'll be good to go to install it right back on here. Dyna liner is in. And again, I started with the leading edge here. I peeled back the paper backing about two inches or so, lined it up on both sides and then reached around and pulled back. And then as you're pulling back, make sure that you press on the depressed regions or the recessed regions, and then smooth out as you go. Here's a snapshot of the finished product. One of the drawbacks of freehanding or eyeballing the Dynamat is that because I didn't use the headliner as a template, you can see that the dynamat is poking out through. So I didn't cut that or calculate that just right. I, you can take a razor blade uh, and just score the top layer of foil and then you can peel back the dynamat and it comes out cleanly. However, I'm a little lazy and I don't think uh, that's enough to warrant the extra effort. It looks pretty factory in my opinion. Nothing crazy aftermarket. Here's a look from the inside. After I peeled it away, installed the Dynamat Dyna Liner.
does not look as good as just the factory installed. However, for my purposes, I think it's pretty good. You don't spend too much time looking at the, uh, the top of the headliner relative to the rest of the vehicle. Okay, so after installing the Dynamat and Dyna liner on the roof panels here, I can say that there is some discernible difference in the kind of vibration effect of the roof panels themselves. Uh, more, to be more specific, um, when going over just general kind of bumps in the road, I feel like it's quieted that down a lot. And then I've also noticed for some strange reason that when the Bronco goes over uh, a bump that's only one tire and not both tires, uh, it also does a fantastic job kind of quieting that down. But when I go over uh, railroad tracks with this Bronco, uh, with the Dyna liner in it now, it still has that large kind of wub uh, reverberation noise and sure maybe it dampens the residual or after effects so it quiet, quiets it down faster but I wouldn't really say that it accomplished my original objective which is to eliminate that reverberation going over large bumps in the pavement such as train tracks. So to summarize would I recommend uh, doing the Dyna liner, Dyna mat, uh, install uh, for average Bronco owners? No, not really. Uh, I think that Bronco owners are buying this vehicle to go off-roading, to be a utility vehicle, and not necessarily have the quietest ride possible. I just did it to see, I was curious, and I had some time to burn, so I thought like it was a good um, kind of first attempt to quiet it down a little bit, and I did achieve a little bit of that. Um, maybe one thing I can you can comment down in the comment section below. I was thinking, uh, you know, there are a couple of uh, bolt spots up here on top of the roll cage. And one thing I noticed is that if I go over bumps and I manually put my hand here and press up into the roof, um, it actually does do a pretty good job as I'm going over railroad tracks to quiet that down. So maybe there's some sort of hardware components from Home Depot or something, some spacers, even like a wedge or a wood block with a cloth wrapped around it that would, you know, create some interference and brace this hardtop against the roll cage to try to eliminate that. Uh, same thing with, with that middle panel. I found that the middle panel and the back panel are the biggest offenders or biggest contributors to that vibration. So if you've got any ideas of fasteners or, or uh, twist kind of spacers or something like that uh let me know and i'll try it out and then i'll let you guys know last thing i wanted to touch on here is that this black diamond uh trim level doesn't come with the hood it doesn't come with the hood insulation here and I wonder how much of a difference that makes. So I actually do have that hood insulation on order from Ford. Um, maybe I'll, I'll share or make another video once I do that. Um, they also want to charge me like $7 or something per pushpin and they're 13 pushpin. So I, I don't know, you do the mash. I, I, didn't, I didn't do that. I figured I could buy some generic pushpins, uh, Christmas tree pushpins and that should work. But uh, if you've got one, pull one out and take a picture and send it to me so I can figure out if uh, generic pushpins would work.